What's up guys, it's Kaisen again with a new episode of our Path of Exile tutorial. At the start of this episode I want to go over a couple of rare items again again, real quick and, and look at the different uh, setups and why or why they're good or why they're bad. Let's look at the first one. Uh, we can actually go Whoa. into a vendor screen so we can vendor them right away if they're, if they're bad. The first one has uh, level 2 socketed melee gems which is good. It has increased physical damage, which is good. Uh, attack speed, which is good. So we have three um, good attributes that really work well together. Um, mana gain on kill is pretty shitty. Uh, accu accuracy rating, it's, it could work with it, but it's a really low roll. Um, we have a really nice uh, socket setting with a three link on here. So overall, this is definitely not a, a, a shitty item. The only problem here is that we don't have the flat physical um, roll. If we would have the flat physical modifier, this would be a great item. As it is, it kind of falls short. So we're still vendoring it. And we get uh, an augmentation off it. That's really nice. This belt, um, first of all, the implicit value on it, 9 to maximum mana uh, energy shield, is a really low roll. I think that's actually the lowest roll. It can go all the way up to 20, so that's not good. Um, there's life and life region on it. That's pretty nice, but the life roll is relatively low. Um, and <clears throat> sorry. And the rest we don't really care about, so we can easily sell this. Next one, uh, increased evasion rating. It's not bad. It's a pretty nice life roll on it, life regen, and a tiny cold resistance roll. Uh, it's it's all right. Um, uh, if we 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 can keep it for now, just in case we need. I mean, we have way better resistances on ours, but if we if we need, uh, especially evasion or some sort of you know armor equivalent at some point. Yeah, I don't know. Now we can. Actually, we can we can sell it. We're probably not going to use it just because the the resistances are so bad. Yeah, we're still going with our oiled vest, and that's that's better than this one. Now we have a uh, bone spirit shield with um, nine intelligence, which is all right because uh, spirit shield is usually for spellcasters. That's you can see that straight away from the uh, from the implicit. Uh, spell damage. So intelligence is good. The uh, critical strike chance for spells is usually good. Uh, increased energy shield is also good. Stun recovery is bad. Uh, additional block chance, especially 3%, is a really nice roll. Um, although four of the five rolls are actually pretty nice, this shield is still not good. Um, simply because it misses the most important stat for a spellcaster, which is spell damage. You have an implicit spell damage roll, yes, but you still need another one. And this one just doesn't have it, so it's something for the vendor. Um, let's look at this one-hander. We have cold damage and lightning damage, so we already have two elemental damage uh, modifiers some fire resistance and life leech that's actually that's not bad it would be it would be sweet if we we had uh, fire damage on this one as well but we can potentially use that if if we would switch to one hander and shield um, so we're gonna keep this one uh, here we have uh, increased armor it's not bad we have a nice life roll uh, good regen and a good fire resist roll. It m the the stat that is missing on here is movement speed, so we would like to have movement speed, but since all the other stats are pretty good, we're gonna keep it. Um, and if we're going into a zone where we need uh, additional fire resistance, we might equip this one. Here we have um, one level to socketed cold gems and spell damage, intelligence and mana. Uh, those four work together. Attack speed doesn't do anything for this because uh, it's 
you know, it's not good for spells. Cast speed, on the other hand, might have been good on his one. Uh, accuracy, again, doesn't do anything for spells, so that's wasted. So we have four stats that work together, two that are wasted. Um, the spell damage roll is pretty low. Uh, the mana roll is also relatively low. Overall, it's just it's not good enough, so we're just going to sell it. And we actually get, because of the plus one to socket, we get an alchemy shard from this one as well. Alright, what else do we have? We have a sapphire ring. Cold resistance, accuracy, mana, energy shield, rarity, and cold resistance. Okay, um, we have a double cold resistance. That's actually pretty good. Uh, rarity is okay. Um, the energy shield and mana would be would be better for a caster. The accuracy is better for an attacker because it increases the damage. But even even as uh, um, a melee, um, you know, a melee build, we can still use the mana, and we don't mind having uh, additional energy shield. So this is not a bad ring, and we're definitely gonna keep it. Last but not least, we have a tower shield that we found. Uh, plus one to socketed melee gems, which is pretty nice. Uh, and we already have three sockets, so that's good. Uh, some some more armor, pretty nice life roll, and three resistances on it. Two of them pretty nice rolls. So this is actually quite a nice item. This is probably the best item that we found so far. Um, in combination with the one-hander, we could think about using it. Not sure if I'm going to do it, because we will probably lose quite some damage. Uh, we can... Let's have a look. Right now we have uh, 70 damage. If we put this on, we have 55. Yeah. I think I want to find a better one-hander before we actually uh, start using this shield. If it's still good at this point, then... Um, but it's... You know, it, it definitely is a good item, that's for sure. And, okay, one last thing that I wanted to do. I found a Rustic Sash. And just to show you guys, if I check the item level, it is 18. We are 21 right now, so it's it's not too far below our level. And uh, since it is a, a perfect uh, implicit of 24, this has 22. I'll try to transmute it and see if I can get something better than the one that we have right now. So we get reduced flask charges used. That means we, we can use our flasks more often. And increased flask mana recovery rate. Um, we lose 8 energy shield. I think I'll take that one. It is not really a, um, a significant upgrade, sadly. But it's better than nothing, so I'll go with it. As I mentioned last episode, um, I went back to the crossroads and we're going towards the intruders in black over here. Making our way up here. Um, we've already seen most of the monsters in this zone. Uh, the uh, zone boss is right here. This guy. Kalav, the headstaver. He is um, nothing special. He uses, you can see, his special attack is this one. Uh, it's called Heavy Strike, and it's just a, um, a bit more powerful single target attack that um, uh, has knockback. So you can see that he knocks me around a bit, but that's all he does. So he's he's really easy. And here we actually get an interesting drop. We've seen this one before as a potential quest reward. And I said something about it. Arctic armor. A defensive spell uh, that you can use. And it, gain, you, it gives you physical and, and uh, protection against physical and fire damage. Um, the interesting thing about it is that it drains a lot of mana. And that's... You know, that's a tricky thing as well. At level 1, right now, it drains 5.7 mana per second standing still. 
and once I start moving it's 28.5 so it's significantly more I can show you guys right here so I have to I have to cast it and once I cast it let's go on my character you will see this nice little thing here right now you can see that my mana is slowly going down. I have some mana region, but it's still not good enough for this one. If I try to run, look at my mana, and it's gone. So it drains my mana so fast that I that I can't even do anything. Now if I take it off, my mana will recover. And if I put it back in, and you can see when I walk, I leave this... Oh, I have to turn it on, sorry. If I walk, I leave this trail of ice behind me. It looks really cool, but as you can see, I can, I simply cannot use it with the mana that I have right now. So to use this skill, you have to have a lot of mana, and you have to have a really high amount of mana regeneration on top of that. I just had an orb of fusing drop, just to show you guys what it looks like and what it does. Uh, reforges the links between sockets on an item. So that means <clears throat> if I have, obviously, uh, to, to use it, you need more than one socket on an item. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not even sure if you can use it on this one. I don't think you can. I, it would be weird if you could use it up on a, on a one socket item. Um, so let's say for this item here, we have three sockets and we have one link between two of the sockets. I could uh, use a fusing on it. I would have to, uh, you know, take it off first, uh, get all of the of the gems out of it, and then I could use this orb on the item. And there's a couple of things that could happen. Uh, so the amount of links are random. So instead of having a link here, it could create a link here. Um, or it, the item could end up with no links at all, or you could have a 3-link. I think that's the amount of options we have right here. Um, because as far as I know, Orb of Fusing will change something, which means if I have a link here right now, and I use the Orb of Fusing, I will not get the item back with the exact same, so a link right here as well. So that basically leaves me with uh, one, two, three options. And the more uh, sockets you have on an item, the more options you will obviously have. And that makes it less likely to fully link an item the more sockets it gets. So you follow the river up and then there's always um, these you know, little paths up the cliff here. And then all the way up here you find Chamber of Sins level 1. Now, in here, um, not really a lot of new monsters. Oh, we actually, you have uh, necromancers in here again, so kill those first. You have um, zombies, but they're a bit different. If you uh, hover over them, you can see that they release poison on death. So let's kill the necromancers. So if I kill one of them, you can see that you see this, this cloud coming out. And that's, uh, again, chaos damage over time. Here we go, so it's all chaos damage right here. I have high life region, so I don't really... You can see my life is slowly going down. If you don't have uh, as much life regeneration as I have, uh, this will be quite more significant to you. You can see this uh, red dot here. And if we go over towards it, you can see an area right here, but there's no master around. Um, the first time I saw this, I was kind of weirded out and thought this might be a bug, but it's not. It's just, uh, if you remember Tora, um, we did this uh, one mission where she told us to look for a den, and this is the den, but there's no entrance right now. You first have to pick up the mission before you can you can actually enter it. Over here, exile. 
Oh, here we go. Okay, that was faster than I expected. Let's just kill all of the zombies around here. Back into the ground with you. There we go. And Vic, as you can see, find the den, which we already out. did. And this time, there's actually there's blood somewhere close by, so you can see the arrow right away. Now, we already okay. Let's get the the level right here. Um, what we're doing now is we will go for more projectile. Well, actually, we have enough damage. Let's go over here. If you don't have enough damage at this point, you can go into projectile damage and sniper. I think we have plenty of damage right now, so I'm going all the way over here towards acrobatics. Um, yeah, it was here. So now you can see rotting den and we can actually enter it. Okay, so let's do that. And as I said before, this is the same again. It might be a different bunch of monsters, a different type, but you have um, a certain amount of monsters in here and one of them is a, a special, a special one. And you just, you have to be careful, uh, first of all, not to draw too many and oh these are roas okay and they're all they're all magic so you, you obviously don't want to have all the roas coming all the the roas coming at you at the same time um, that could be really dangerous so let's just all right, I want to have this let's just fire in here uh, we have a couple of them coming now. Let's just kill them all. You can see it's uh, 11 out of 26 are dead. Oh. Alright. You guys are dead. Just paying attention not to be hit by the charge attack. Oh, whoops. Oh, well, I mean, now I'm in. Now everybody will just come for me. Let's get rid of them one by one. 23. There's three left. Okay, we got it. Back to Tora. I do believe you and I. And we're level two. I should mention that uh, for this zone, for. Uh, Chamber of Sins, you should definitely check your uh, your lightning resistance. I have 42 right now. Um, again, it's halfway decent. Um, as you, this is level one. As you go into level two, uh, lightning resistance will be more important than here. As you go into level three, you will definitely need a good amount of lightning resistance, uh, and we'll see that relatively soon. Since I I, you know, I know exactly how much damage I can take. Uh, I'll just go with the 42. I would, if you guys are new to the game, and this is the first time going through this, I would highly recommend you guys getting at least, eh, at least 55 or 60 lightning resist somehow. Um, easiest, again, is through uh, some piece of jewelry, especially rings, or potentially uh, you can get it on a, you know, on some other equipment. But, yeah, try to get as much lightning resistance for this area as possible. Uh, in this first level of Sins, you can see this uh, circular thing in the middle right here. Um, the entrance here is blocked, so we kind of have to go around to get in. I'm just going to rush through here. Let's... Okay, well... Let's ram up, we're gonna kill him. Just pick this stuff up. But I just wanna get into the middle. Oh, okay, it's blocked here as well, so I have to go around again. Um, so this middle section is usually blocked off from one, two, or maybe even three sides. So it's not that easy to get in. Um, that's a dead end. We have some 
mutant Arax in here, and they use Viper Strike. Um, we've seen that as a potential quest reward before, and now we'll see it in action. Here we go. Hit by Viper Strike, you're taking chaos damage from Viper Strike. So, and that can go on. I have like four charges right now. I can. I think it's up to five charges that they could, can put on you, and you see it like swirling around you. And the more charges you have, the more damage you take over time. So, uh, if they hit you, and they put a charge on you, you want to get away from them, and wait until the time runs out. You see there's like a timer on it, and every time they put a new stack on you, the timer resets. So right now, I just have to not uh, get damaged by them for another second. So that, that should be easily possible. You just you have to be aware of it and uh, pay attention to it. Otherwise, you you take a lot of damage. Okay, I'm not sure I'm actually going the right way here. Uh, let's just step back for a second. We have to go through here. Yes. Okay, a lot of monsters here. Let's just kill them. What's this? Extra life. Our damage is absolutely sufficient. Let's just kill all of them. And this should be our way into the middle. And in the middle here we have the zone boss. So that's why I want to go there. Right here. You can see this uh, aura here. Uh, Plague Wretch is the zone boss. Just kill all these zombies here. And he's similar to um, the... we've seen the aura before, so if we go too close you can see that my health goes down. It's chaos damage over time as soon as you get too close to him. And he also uses Viper Strike, so if you just you know keep him at range, so you can just easily kill him this way. If he gets too close he hits pretty hard, and you also take consistent damage over time. We had a, a new kind of belt drop. Um, I'm not even going to pick it up because I personally think that it is... Uh, it's not a good belt at all. Um, there's just... Yeah, I don't really see a lot of uh, things you can do with it. It's increased stun duration on enemy. So if you have an attack that can stun an enemy, you can stun that enemy longer. Um, Back in the day, there were some builds where you could consistently stun the enemy. So you would just attack, 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 and you would not get hit because, you know, the, the monster couldn't do anything. It was stunned 100% of the time. Um, because that happened, they nerfed stun. So it's way harder to get enough stun nowadays. And I feel, compared to the other implicit values that you can get on a belt, this one is just not good enough, so I'm not even going to pick up the item. On one side of uh, the area, in level 1, you will find stairs down to level 2. Same goes for level 2, uh, when you're trying to find your way down to level 3. Uh, if you find the stairs here first, um, what you can do, you don't necessarily have to do it, because you probably don't have to come back here. I just want to mention that there is a waypoint uh, in level 2, so if you want to find the waypoint here, uh, just look for it. Now here, um, the lightning resistance comes in a bit, is a bit better, and is more important, because here you get Bone Wardens, who deal lightning damage, and you have Necromancers, who will cast this guy will cast Conductivity. I'm waiting for him to cast it. Because then you can see... I'm actually going to open my defenses as well. I have 42 lightning right now. Now if this guy casts it, which I hope he will do at some point, here we go, this goes down to 2. So we lose 40% resistance. That's why... Um, this is really dangerous with low resistances, um, and resistances can go into negative, 
So if you only have 20 lightning resistance, you will end up with minus 20 lightning. So you will take a shit ton of damage in here. Um, so take out the, the necromancers as fast as possible and make sure that you have a decent amount of resistance. Alright, a couple of monsters here. We get the, the curse again, so this is quite dangerous. And we have um, Axiom Thunder Guards as well. They just have... Um, they fire those balls, and it's all lightning damage, so... You really have to be careful. If there's too many monsters around and you get a curse with conductivity, uh, you can die really quickly here. So take out the Necros and just keep on moving around, try to evade as much damage as possible. And that's the way how you survive. Okay, as I said, there's a waypoint in here. Once you find it, you can use it to uh, go back to town and maybe sell some of the stuff that you picked up. And then you can uh, progress and try to find the, your way down to level 3, which is the last level in, this, uh, in these chambers. Oh, here we go. A Blasphemer. I don't think we encountered this one before. Oh, he might get away. Come on. Uh, I took too long. Come on. Yes. Nice. Okay. That was pretty close. Wow. We get quite some drops here. Was there somebody else over here? Nope. Sweet. That was close. Um, oh, by the way, um, I don't think I mentioned that, uh, you know, I obviously upgraded my flasks, and you should always do that. They're really important for your survival, so always try to get the highest level flasks. <clears throat> and somewhere around this level, it makes sense um, to identify uh, magic flasks as well. Before this, I just sold them to the vendor. I couldn't even bother. But at this point, it, it's slowly more important to get the magic ones. So here I have Dispelled, Frozen and Chilled on one of them, which means that if one of the monsters freezes me, if I chug this flask, if I press 4, then uh, I'm not f frozen anymore, so I can just uh, get away right away. And this one uh, gives me additional elemental resistances. We've seen that one before. We have it on our Quicksilver flask. Alright, so let's uh, keep on going and try to find level 3. We had a skill drop right here, and I just want to highlight that skill. Uh, Rejuvenation Totem. It requires level 19 at uh, level 1. So you can already see that now we get some, some higher level gems. And uh, I'll just put it in here for now. Uh, so you can see we have it right here. And what it says, it summons a totem that has an aura which regenerates life for you and nearby allies. So if you're in a party, um, it regenerates your life and also the life of every party member. And if you're a summoner and you have your summons, it also regenerates life of the zombies or the skeletons that you summoned. Um, only within a certain totem range, though. You can see it says totem range 10. Not quite sure how far that is, but you can't go too far away from the totem. And what you do is just you put it down right here for example and then it will last uh, at level 1 it will last 20 seconds and it will regenerate 20.7 life per second which is pretty huge actually if you look at it that's uh, 3% of your life per second roughly so definitely not a bad definitely not a bad skill gem um, especially for for summoners actually because as a summoner you mostly have your skeletons or your zombies do all the work while you just deal damage and you know standing still in the background and dealing damage so you could just put down your totem and maybe uh, heal your your zombies while they're attacking so they're pretty much invincible and uh, it will really help you out also um, to keep up your own health uh, if you you know get get hit here and there from time to time we just found Katarina again and we had a level up so 
let's put our skill point right in here. Get some more dexterity. And let's see what she wants from us. Find and revive nine corrupted corpses. That's quite a bit. Um, but let's just progress and see where we can find them. You can already see some over there. Alright, and here we have some more Thunder Guards. Oh, whoops. That was my mistake. I'm still uh, playing in window mode and I kind of went out of my window. Okay, let's pick up this. Yeah, I just want to get rid of all of these. And there's more over here. Let's go here first. Oh, oh, this, this is something new. Okay, you can see that this guy has like a... a what's written in yellow there it says Bringer of Bones. And Bringer of Bones means that he spawns, constantly spawns skeletons. This is uh, a, a, a mode or a, a mod that um, was first introduced with one of the um, extensions, I wanted to say. But it was a challenge league called Invasion. And uh, these mods were on basically all rare monsters uh, at that point. And now they're pretty rare, so um, you have to play quite a bit to see all of them. Pringer of Bones is basically just spawning skeletons all the time. So it's it's it can be really annoying, and the skeletons definitely deal some damage as well. So we found another support gem, also a red gem. It's called Iron Will. Uh, Iron Will. And uh, it's mostly used for spells. <clears throat> you can also find Iron Will on the skill tree. Uh, where is it? Iron Will. It's somewhere here. Nope. Oh, Iron Grip. Okay. <clears throat> That's close to it, though. Iron Grip uh, on the on the skill tree increases... The increase to physical damage from strength applies to projectile attacks as well. I think this is a bit different. Um, so, this was for projectiles, and this one uh, adds the strength damage bonus to spells. So, this one is particularly for spells. So if you have a, a build <clears throat> that uses a spell and on your passive tree you got a, a lot of strength, uh, this might be worthwhile because um, you get quite a big damage boost depending on the amount of strength that you gathered. Um, it starts out initially with reduced cast speed, but as you level it up the reduction of ca in cast speed will, you know, will get lower and lower. So it will be it will be uh, better and better as you get it closer to level twenty. All right, let's uh, let's continue here and try to get these these monsters. Okay, we have we had one up here. There's some here, and the last one that we're probably gonna take is right here. Oh, we have a strong box as well. Pretty nice. Jewelers um, is actually one that we haven't seen. But let's let's get those guys first. Now you can see that as soon as we click on this on it, uh, they will just start attacking us. So and they deal quite a bit of damage. So we want to kill them as fast as possible. Once they die, they explode. So you, uh, you want to, as a melee character, you want to get away from it once you kill one of them. Um, Okay, before we open the strong box, let's complete the mission, which means let's open this and attack them right away. Yeah, you can see how... Whoa. Okay, that's a lot of damage coming in. My health dropped pretty quickly there. Alright, they're gone. So let's go back to the... Huh. I thought... Oh, was that the second one? Okay, so we have to find another one. Never mind. Um, in that case, uh, we can probably open this one before we do that. Oh, I don't even have a wisdom scroll. 
Okay, let's go here. So this is the way down to level 3. But we're obviously gonna do these couple of things first. Yeah, you can see it's, it's definitely... they're dealing some damage to me. Alright, we killed them all. Let's use our flask to get back to uh, Katarina real quick. I might have to go back to town to get some uh, wisdom scrolls. Here we go, we got her to level 2 now. That's nice. We're still missing the uh, zone boss of uh, this one, so I'll probably look for, for the zone boss a bit more. <clears throat> but to be able to identify this... Uh, let's get an armor scrap. We can just put those in here for now. And I'm just gonna throw the rest in here. I can sort it later on. Hello. And sell the armor scraps for some uh, wisdom scrolls. And go right back in. And now, let's see what this is all about. 1,361% increased rarity of contained items. This sounds ridiculous, um, but as far as I heard and I experienced as well, this doesn't really do too much, honestly. Um, somebody told me that later on in maps, uh, so uh, in endgame, it's a bit different and it, it might have an, uh, a greater effect, but so far I haven't really, haven't really seen anything about it. It revives nearby dead monsters. That's actually a problem because we killed the, you know, the strong revived monsters here. Let's see what happens. Let's just click it and get away. Okay. Oh, that was not too bad. Yeah, we can easily deal with them. And the last one. Nope. There's one over here. Here we go. And so this was called Jewelers strong box and a jeweler's strong box um, will drop <coughs> sorry will drop uh, belts rings and amulets um, so you could I mean this was a really poor drop I have to say um, if you see one you could potentially think about uh, using an alteration on it uh, to to get additional items on it, which is usually worthwhile, but it's still low level. It's it's level 20 in here, so I don't want to spend my currency on it at this point. I would have spent a uh, transmute on it uh, if it hadn't been magic already, but as it was, I'm fine with it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right, I'm just gonna look for the uh, area boss in here. Okay, here we found the boss. Uh, let's kill this. Necro first. Uh, the boss is called Black Death, and same as the small spiders, if you get hit, uh, you can get Viper Strikes from it. It hits relatively hard, and here we go, Viper Strikes. Yeah, you can see my health is going down really fast, so this one is pretty dangerous. If you get the stacks, just run around a bit until the stacks are gone, uh, heal up, and just get some quick damage in until you get a stack. Okay, I didn't get a stack so I could just keep on going. And otherwise, um, if it hits you with a Viper Strike stack, just run away again, run a bit in circles and then go back in and, and finish it off. Okay, so we made it to level 3 and here it gets really tricky um, with low lightning resist. Those guys here, the Sparkers, Oh, no, they're actually not the ones that I was looking at. Okay, like, get rid of the of the Necros as soon as possible. Um, and there's one particular monster type in here that will just destroy you. Those guys, the spark, the sparking mages. If you don't have uh, good lightning resists, and I don't really have the best, they will just destroy you. Oh, and there's blues in here, that's not good. I think I killed that guy, yeah. So those guys deal a lot of damage to you. You have to be really careful 
um, try not to engage too many at once and just try to um, kill the necro and, and get him from afar. So your goal in this, uh, the, the third level, is to find a room where, um, which is kind of uh, quadratic, is that a word? It's rectangular and uh, there's a, like a, a hallway leading out of it. That's where you want to go. It's like a long hallway and if you follow it to the end you get to this area here. And who's here? Oh, surprise. You made it around the barrier at Prisoner's Gate? Such talent. Make your way to San Exile. It's Piety again. Uh, we don't really know yet what she was doing here, but she went away again. So she's always just teasing us and then uh, just leaving. That thing! It slaughtered everyone! Help me! So there's like a woman hiding right here and apparently something slaughtered everyone and I guess we're supposed to kill it. And that's the thing. Fidelitas, the morning. And we've seen this attack before. That's a lightning strike. And that's basically the only thing that this guy does. Um, if you keep him at range, he doesn't do anything. If he comes too close, he will use his lightning strike. If you have low lightning resist, uh, this will hit quite hard. So just uh, kite him a bit and then you can easily kill him. Here we go. That was pretty easy, right? Okay, there's a couple of, uh, uh, you know, sparkling mages in here. If you want to uh, go safe, just kill all of them. Oh, Warlord's Mark. Pretty nice. Um, Alright, and then you have to click this thing and a Baleful Gem drops. You pick that one up, open a portal, go back to town, because that's all you have to do here. <clears throat> You're basically done with this area. Now, uh, let's have a look at Warlord's Mark. Warlord's Mark curses all targets in an area, making them more vulnerable to stuns. Hitting the cursed targets will leech life and mana, and killing them will result <clears throat> in a chance to gain an endurance charge. So there's a lot of different things that this one does. This is the first curse that we found. And if you put it on, you will get it on here. And you basically, you hover over the area where you want to curse. And then you press W or, you know, wherever you have put it. And within a certain radius, it will curse all enemies, and then you can li you can uh, leech life and leech mana off them, and you get endurance charges. And we talked about endurance charges earlier. Uh, if you kill them while this uh, this mark this curse is still on, um, we will probably not use this. I don't know. I haven't decided honestly. I'm just gonna put it in here for now, and. Uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, talk to Groist. And you will get a reward here. There's a couple of gems you can choose from. Frenzy, the first one, is for um, bows and also for melee weapons. And it performs an attack that gives the character a frenzy charge if it hits. So basically, as you hit, you get more frenzy charges. Frenzy charges uh, increase your attack speed and that means the more you hit the faster your attacks will get it's a pretty interesting gem projectile weakness is also a curse and uh, within a certain radius it curses all enemies um, to make them more susceptible to projectiles they take 20 percent increased damage they take uh, they are knocked back if they're hit with a projectile and they also, um, they can be pierced, which means that if you hit the first target, then it can pierce through that target and hit targets after, um, like, behind it. Frostbite is a curse as well, uh, makes them less resistance to cold damage and a higher chance for them to be frozen. Lightning Arrow we had before, 
Uh, hatred, uh, I think we saw before as well. It's the uh, aura where some of your physical damage is um, converted, and uh, not converted, but on top of your physical damage you get a percentage of your physical damage as cold damage. Flicker Strike was the um, the one that, that hurts your head. <coughs> Poacher's Mark is another curse that um, makes enemies less evasive. Um, and if you hit the enemies after they become less evasive, you uh, get mana and life. And you get you have a uh, chance of getting frenzy charges when you slay them. So this is you know a different version of uh, Warlord's Mark, the one that just dropped for us. Purity of Ice is uh, an aura that uh, grants cold resistance to you and your allies. So this is a defensive aura, and it basically gives you at level one an additional twenty percent cold resistance. Barrage we already know. And Reckoning is uh, a brand new skill that came out with the 1.3 update. Uh, it performs a swift counterattack against enemies in a cone shape when you block with your shield. So if you have a shield equipped and you block, then um, it, it's not an actual attack, like you don't have to click for it, it's automatic. You just automatically <coughs> counterattack the enemy. Um, I haven't really used this skill because it just came out. Um, we will use a shield at some point, so this skill might actually be interesting for us. But what I will get here, because it is actually really good for us right now, is projectile weakness. Um, so we have a curse, and since our main attack, um, spectral throw, is a projectile, this works very well for us. So that's our choice right here. And I don't think there's anything else over here. Let's just talk to the rest and see if something's going on here. Nope. Okay, nothing new. All right, guys. Um, we're over 45 minutes again, so I'll end the episode here. Uh, you can see that both Tora and Katarina want to talk to us, so we're quickly going to do that if this is working out. Seems like I have a bit of lag. You know what um, color? Here we go. We need to make sure you're proper. So, um, that's mostly <clears throat> when they level up. And when they level up, they have new items that you could buy. So, you can see at level 1, they only had the blue unidentified items. Now they have a rare and unidentified. I think we've seen that before in Haku. So, it's the same here. Um, should be the same for her as well. Here we even have uh, a four link. So this is something that we will eventually be looking at for, um, you know, helmets, for boots, and for gloves. Because a four link on one of these items is the maximum you can get. So that's that's really good. Um, I would still not buy this just because it's un unidentified and the item itself could be really bad. So, if the item is really bad, the, the four link doesn't really do anything for us. Um, so we'll just wait for uh, a good item to drop and then either we will make it four linked or if we're lucky, it already is four linked when it drops. So, yeah, we'll wait for that to happen. Alright, so this will be the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, we managed to go through the Chamber of Sins, and we got the Baleful Gem. In the next episode, we will go back to the Black One and go into this side area here, where we will get uh, another quest item that we need to proceed. And um, once we've done that, we can finally make our way over here and unlock some new areas. All right. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, please give the video a like if you did. And uh, if you want to support me, just uh, follow the channel. Uh, I'll, I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you guys for the next episode.